Well, welcome once again uh, to our weekly Bible study here at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Appleton, Wisconsin. Glad you're joining me today. I'm Pastor Sebaugh. Uh, today we're going to look at James chapter 3 for our study, beginning at verse 13, all the way to chapter 4, verse 10. And James, uh, the book of James is about our living out our faith uh, now that we have been saved. So James is adamant that faith without works is dead, and we want to show that our faith connected to God really serves God and serves our neighbor in the way that we live. On September 14th, we also uh, remember Holy Cross Day, and so we'll use that as our prayer. O Lord God, strengthen us to raise high the cross where Jesus died for us. May we not shrink from the horrors of the pain and suffering your Son endured for our sins. Deliver us from Satan, who seeks to diminish what Christ has done for us at every turn. Filled with the hope of our own salvation, help us share the good news of his resurrection with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Again today we have James uh, chapter 3. Uh, beginning at verse 13. One thing I want us to notice about the image today is we're going to talk about wisdom that is from on high and wisdom from below. And as we think about the wisdom from on high, we're talking about godly wisdom, uh, the wisdom of the cross, which we know is godly wisdom, although uh, foolishness for those who are perishing uh, but the wisdom from below, the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of our uh, corrupted self because of sin, uh, which is cheered on and perpetuated by Satan, is what we want to be careful not to be the guiding principle of our living uh, with each other and with God. So to focus on godly wisdom, the things that are above rather uh, than the things that are uh, below, which can be a challenge for us as we live every day. So, who is the wise and understanding among you, James says? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. So, we have a little fill in the blank here to start uh, our study today. Uh, who is wise? Who is wise and understanding among you? So we think about that. Who is considered wise and understanding about you? Now there's different ways to classify wisdom, right? By his good conduct, so by his good conduct, let him show his works. in the meekness of wisdom. All right? Life's direction is determined by the heart's desires. Life direction is determined by what the heart desires. So wisdom and understanding focused on the heart's desire, which is connected to the world and to our sinful nature, is going to have a different a direction than life's direction determined by a heart uh, that is captive to God and his word. And that's what James is all about uh, in talking uh, to us and sharing with us what is godly wisdom. How can we live uh, as wise in this world and therefore reflecting uh, the wisdom of God every day. So let's take a better look at this, deeper look at it. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, so that's your wisdom generated to, to be uh, about you and, about, and forgetting about others, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder and every vile practice. Selfishness and 
jealousy, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, where it's all about me, our attention isn't toward others, and jealousy exists when we want, we desire what someone else has. You know, that is our focus on the world. So how is earthly, unspiritual, demonic, a descending triad of evil? That's what we had in this image uh, before. So how is this a descending triad of evil? When we think about our enemies, we remember the threefold enemies, the devil and the world and our sinful flesh. So earthly, unspiritual, demonic, a descending triad of evil because what these enemies of God want us to do is to take us on, off of that which is godly and to focus on that which is evil, that which is self-centered, that which is selfish, that which is about me, and again, lack of care and concern for others. Bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts. Now, people talk about how it's important to achieve, it's important to to want to um, have things in this world, but not at the expense of others. Not uh, to commit sin in order to have these things. That's where the devil and the world, sinful nature, have that control over us. When we will do anything and everything, even, again, sin, uh, to have what is not to be ours. You know, that's the thing, too. Uh, some people in our world are going to have more than us. Well, appear to have, and appear to be happy because they have more than us. We can say, well, if I had more, I'd be happier, happy as they are. But where is our true happiness and joy found? It's in, it's in the contentment, right, being content you know, with what God gives to us. He knows what we need and he provides for us. So what is at the heart of earthly wisdom? The heart of earthly wisdom uh, it comes down uh, earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. So that is where the heart of earthly, it's, it's unspiritual, so not connected to God, and demonic. And again, it's not to say that, that for some within our world, and, and hopefully you and me, that from our heart, good can't come but it, out of the heart, only good can come when the heart is transformed. You know, without a, a heart that knows God and, and the sacrifice that he has made, the heart of the earthly wisdom is always going to be of the self, is always going to have the hindrance of sin in it. And therefore, what comes out of it is going to be of the same direction. So when where your heart is, that's where your wisdom comes from, and our heart that remains in sin, not transformed by Jesus, by God's grace through faith, is going to have that focus on the world and the happiness that comes from it, people believe, or from their own uh, works and efforts. What result does such earthly wisdom produce in human society? Well, that is where we have jealousy and selfishness, okay? So self, selfishness. All right? The ability to just want more and more and more. Uh, which leads, again, to despising our neighbor, to being out of control. We're going to see this further in our text of James. But So when our wisdom is based on something other than God, it becomes that which has its origin in sin. And the origin of sin is that which is opposed to God and that which is opposed to what is good. It enjoys evil. It thrives on evil. It, it, it is based on disobedience to God uh, when it comes to our living each and every day. So the triad of evil is the devil and the world and our sinful nature. And when 
it has control of our lives, we find ourselves uh, not living according to God's word and focused on the jealousy and bitterness that can come from our lives, never being content, never being happy as God has uh, given us that opportunity to be. So James continues. So that's wisdom from below, okay? The wisdom outside of God, or so-called wisdom, right? But the wisdom from above is first pure, so holy, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Notice when we talk about jealousy and we talk about self-centeredness, that has nothing to do with that. That's a person who's not content, a person who is struggling, chasing after all these things. They are not gentle and peaceable. They're not open to reason because they are so dissatisfied with what they have and, and um, their life within this world. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So what does it mean that the wisdom... Uh, that comes down from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. So this is the life of a Christian, pure, one that is forgiven, their sins have been washed away, then peaceable, so life in the spirit, and the Spirit then produces fruit, shows itself uh, in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and gentleness and self-control. Those are the good fruits, full of mercy, full of the mercy that we have received from God in our forgiveness is the mercy we extend to others. Our life is not about simply getting ahead of others and doing whatever it takes to be happy in the in the in our life of the world, which happens so often in our life today. But when we are happy in our life with the Lord, then everything is good. Everything is peaceable. We know God is uh, still with us. God loves us, and we can draw our attention to serving God and serving others because we are at peace with God. We're at peace with others. So what do all these qualities of the wisdom from above have in common? Well, they are all they are all from God. And this has all been about godly living as people of faith. So it's God living by faith. This is the quality of a person who is at peace. The wisdom from above have in common. Directed from God so that we can have godly living by faith. Pure, peaceable, gentle, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere is what God wants for our living. What is the harvest of righteousness that is sown in peace by those who make peace? The harvest is that our living, you know, right, according to God's word, then helps our living with others. So our impact in this world by living uh, lives of, in the gospel and lives that are full of peace and joy and, and patience and kindness and goodness, that does affect those around us. That does change their attitude and, and because we have an attitude of one in which our wisdom, our knowledge from God who has forgiven our sins and given us life and salvation then endeavors to live this life uh, with others. I also like, um, you know, being impartial and sincere, looking at everyone as a person that God has redeemed, and therefore we have a heart for them as God has had a heart for us 
and for others. It takes away our selfishness, takes away our jealousy, because we're all in this life together. We all need Jesus. He died and rose for all, and we seek to love God and to love others as we have first been loved. And that does make an impact on our lives and on the lives of others. I mean, think about it. When we are content, when we are happy uh, with our living, we know people see this. And even in the most difficult of times, uh, we are not worried about what's going to happen today or tomorrow or even the next day because we know that God has provided for us and continues to do so. And so this is our model for living, a, a life that's transformed from above out uh, to others. So warning against worldliness. This is what we're trying to avoid. So again, fill in the blank here. What causes quarrels? So where do already arguments happen within our lives? Oh, sorry about that. Quarrels. And what causes fights? Nothing we ever want to see in our living. Uh, is not this that your passions, what your desires are, are at war within you? James says that the inner war even keeps us from asking God what we want. So the war is sinner versus saint, the new man redeemed in baptism, the old man. That's at war with us all the time. Okay, and so it prevents us from Rather than being content and asking God, hey, I'm struggling with this, or I need that, or would like to have that, both with our wants and our needs, we, you know, result in jealousy, we result in, in uh, anger and in frustration because we're not content, we're not satisfied. Uh, so why are we hesitant and neglect, uh, neglectful about talking to God about some of the things our hearts desire? Why does God not comply with some of our requests? Well, we're hesitant because, you know, we're focused downward again on worldly wisdom. So we don't seek God. We try to solve it ourselves or to obtain it ourselves because we think that is necessary. Because look at this. Is it not this that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. Okay. You have worldly wisdom. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you wrong. You ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. So why does not God comply with some of our requests? Because God knows best. God knows best. We may ask for something that we think we need when it's really a want. We may ask for something we want when it's really a need. And God will answer what is best for our relationship with him and our relationship with others. We can count on God delivering us when we need it. You know, God never allows things to occur in our lives which are going to pull us away from him. And I know things can be really difficult and things can be really challenging in our lives. And we see others whose life may be less complicated, and we say they're not Christians, they don't believe in God, and so this is where this jealousy and this frustration exists, but God says, talk to me. Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you will glorify me. You know, ask and it will be given to you, seek you'll find, knock and the door will be open unto you. But also when we pray, we say, thy will be done. So we ask and ask and ask, as children should ask their Heavenly Father, knowing that He can and does provide for us. But we also say, God, your will be done. In other words, I am going to be content and happy with what you give to me. So sometimes God's going to say yes. Sometimes God's going to say no. Sometimes God's going to wait. He's going to say wait, but God knows what is best. We trust in Him rather than in our worldly wisdom. And that's why we can be hesitant or neglectful because we rely on ourselves. 
Why do those who fight and quarrel, covet and kill to get what they desire, still often find themselves unsatisfied, even what they get, what they wanted? I think because, of course, they have sinned. They have sin. That's still that guilt is going to be remain. What have I, I what did I do uh, to get all of this? What what have I accomplished uh, when I murder someone? I mean that is the law going to continue to convict me when I have fought with people and this is what I fought about. I mean, how often do our passions and our and our emotions get in such a fevered pitch that this is the result in our lives and we look back on and say are you serious i fought over this i mean we talk about um, black friday right the thanksgiving uh post uh, shopping day in which this one item is limited and it's something that people say they cannot live without and they will do everything and anything including murder and uh, certainly not loving their neighbor because they're caught up in worldliness in these things their wisdom is based upon the world their sinful nature and it leads to all sorts of sin that's the problem you see when we underestimate at times we really do uh, the seriousness of coveting uh, when we desire so many things and they consume our lives. So when they consume us, they take control. And when what we can't have, but what we want takes control, that desire, it leads to all sorts of sin. Uh, coveting leads to murder. It leads to adultery. It leads to bearing false witness against our neighbor. It leads to not honoring those in authority, it really corrupts our lives completely. Um, so we are to trust in the Lord, submit ourselves unto him. So you adulterous people, do, not, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So separation, absolute separation, if you love the world and its wisdom more than God, you are an adulterous people. You have made the world your lover rather than God. Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. That is flat out God's wisdom there. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scriptures say he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? God is a jealous God. He wants us to remain his forever. But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble, the person who submits themselves unto the Lord, the person who trusts in the Lord. Uh, so God will help us navigate these passions within us so they don't take control of our, us. So God uh, gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Trust in him. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. So James says that friendship with the world that grows out of worldly wisdom is spiritual adultery. And he reminds us that God yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in uh, us. We remember this from the conclusion to the Ten Commandments that I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, you know, punishing iniquities upon the fathers, upon the children of the fourth, third, and fourth generation of those who hate me, but giving love and forgiveness to all those um, who love me and keep my commandments. So God is not willing to share the hearts and minds and lives of his people with that which is earthly, unspiritual, and, de and demonic. And we have to ask ourselves, why are we trusting in that which God has already made? And why are we trusting in that which is corrupted by sin rather than God himself? So James urges us to submit to God because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Um, typically, people who are uh, chasing after the worldly things think that they are better than everyone else because they have more. 
And God says, no, you have everything when you are my child. So how does that submission to God enable us successfully to resist the devil and continually to draw near to God? Well, we submit in, we submit in faith. Okay? We submit in faith. And so that we are dwelling on that which is above. And then the devil and that around us is ignored because our focus, our attention in faith is where it needs to be. We trust the Lord. We resist the devil then uh, with the victory won by Jesus. Of what does James want, us, uh, want to make us continually aware uh, with his strong words that we should cleanse our hands, purify our hearts, be wretched and worn and weak. Let our laughter be turned to mourning and our joy to gloom. So continually aware that we are sinners. You know, that we are going to find ourselves with these worldly passions and desires which are going to lead to more and more sin and separate us from God. And so we need to daily confess our sins of thoughts, words, and deeds when we have failed uh, to be faithful to the one who is faithful to us. Uh, what is the end result of that? Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. So we confess. God forgives. And this is the mercy that is so important, as we talked about in the very beginning. The mercy of God, which withholds his full wrath for our sins, for the sake of Jesus, and therefore still allows us to be his children, still restores us and reconnects us uh, to his salvation by God's grace through faith. So in our world today, I mean, we're going to find this challenge. James is a wonderful book of our Christian living um, and the challenges that happen within it. So if we focus on the things that are of this world, of our flesh, of the devil, we're going to find ourselves breaking God's law and not loving our neighbor and not loving him with all our heart, soul, and mind. When our mind is set on the things above, then we can practice godly living and godly behavior. Our lives remember first and foremost that we are saved and redeemed. And then as we think about the things of this world, we can trust that God will and does provide for us every day. And God encourages us through James to talk to him when we struggle or have concerns. And know that as we commend our lives into his hands, he will and does provide. So wisdom is found in God's word. This is how where God has revealed himself. And in that wisdom, we see the cross, the foolishness for the perishing world. But for us, it is the key to our life with God now and forever. So seeking wisdom Seek where God's wisdom is revealed in his word and trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and he will continue to provide for you and bless you. And we can then show that love for our neighbor as we have been loved. The fruits of the spirit abound uh, when we live in Christ by faith. So, a lot to think about today it goes back to this first image, not focusing on the things below, but on the things of God where Jesus has died and rose for us. And in that wisdom, we live in his forgiveness and love and mercy, and we practice that toward others. So, God bless your day. Thanks for joining me again for Bible study. We'll see you again uh, next Wednesday.